So this image initially does look like quite a, a busy image, but I just want to draw your attention to some of the features on this picture. So many of the veins of the scalp and indeed the face um, essentially follow similar routes to the arterial supply of these structures and often share very similar names. So one of the veins draining the scalp is our superficial temporal vein, which we see here. This is our superficial temporal vein. We also have a couple of veins draining the front of the scalp, known as our suprotrochlear and supraorbital veins. And these actually ultimately join um, with the facial vein, as we see here. We also uh, see the posterior occipital veins just here and the uh, posterior auricular veins. And it's actually the joining of the posterior auricula uh, with the superficial temporal that gives us the external jugular vein. So this runs down the, or in the superficial cervical fascia of the neck, uh, running uh, laterally to ultimately uh, drain into the subclavian vein here. And it's the external jugular vein that's often uh, most readily visible in, in a person's neck. So this image here hopefully nicely demonstrates that. So just to orientate you, here's the ear, there's the sternocleidomastoid muscle in the clavicle, and we're looking onto the right side of this person's neck. And this visible vessel here is the external jugular vein. And this mustn't be mistaken for the internal jugular vein, which is what we use uh, to assess a patient's jugular venous pressure. The internal jugular vein is going to be running much deeper um, and uh, deep to the sternocleidomastoid muscle. So this vessel here is our external jugular vein and it's running in the superficial cervical fascia of the neck, so just beneath uh, the layer of skin. So let's turn our attention then finally to this other connection between superficial veins, this time the veins of the scalp, and these deeper venous structures, the dural venous sinuses. So we'll take a look now at our final image that just shows how these two relate to each other. So in this image here, we're looking at a coronal section through the scalp. And having created a coronal section through the scalp, we're then looking at straight on um, to, to what we can see. So here we see the five layers of the scalp. If you remember these, we have skin, um, connective tissue, which is dense connective tissue in which we'll find our arteries and, and veins that supply the scalp. Then we come to our aponeurotic uh, layer, the aponeurosis. And then beneath that, we have our loose um, areola tissue or our loose connective tissue layer. And finally, that brings us to the um, periosteal layer of the, of the bone. Beneath the bone of the skull, uh, we have the hemispheres, the hemispheres of the brain, the right and the left hemisphere would sit here. And these structures here denote the meninges, the uh, layers that cover the brain, uh, that include the, the dura. And what we have here in the middle is one of our dural venous sinuses. And this one happens to uh, run from um, the, the back of the skull towards the front of the skull uh, between the uh, right and left hemispheres of the brain. And what we can see is there is a venous connection between veins within the dense connective tissue layer of the scalp and these dural venous sinuses. And what these veins are called are emissary veins. So potentially infections that are essentially relatively superficial and involving the dense connective tissue layer of the scalp could travel from extracranial locations to intracranial locations, so into these dural venous sinuses, as a result of these venous connections, these emissary veins.